The nominees for U Sports Women's Hockey Rookie of the Year are En nomination pour le prix de la Rookie of the Year The one you dream of is in there. The only thing that you can occupe is the glory. The cheminement of the réussite of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. The sacrifice could be fair. The sign of the Exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues des championnats U Sport. By Connect Energy, proud presenting partner of this U Sports Championship. Par Connect Energy, fier partenaire de ce championnat U Sport. And by GFL, proud title partner of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Par GFL, fier partenaire en titre du championnat de hockey féminin U Sport 2024. FX et puis les Warriors de Waterloo. for talented players to join our team. The Health Sciences Association of Saskatchewan is a union representing an all-star team of over 4,000 specialized healthcare professionals, giving it their all in over 30 professions within Saskatchewan. Our members are geared up and at the drop of a puck are ready to help you get your health back in the game. You'll find our members in hospitals, emergency services, communities, and long-term care. Your hometown team, ready to assist you in reaching your health goals. HSAS are proud sponsors of the gold medal game in support of the Saskatoon Food Bank.
Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visite le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. De retour à la place Merlis Belcher pour le premier match de ce championnat canadien entre, ben plutôt huit équipes ici au Canada. Premier match entre les Warriors de Waterloo et les X-Women de la l'Université Saint-Francis-Xavier. Du côté des Warriors de Waterloo, ben c'est les vainqueurs de la division ontarienne. Ils sont classés quatrième pour ce tournoi. Et du côté des X-Women, eh ben on est euh, le meilleur finaliste, si on peut, là, nous qui a terminé deuxième dans la division Atlantique. Donc c'est numéro 4 contre numéro 5, ici, à Saskatoon. Nous sommes prêts pour le début de ce match. Les gardiens de partant du côté saint effet c'est Amaya Giraudier, qui a une fiche de 13 victoires, 4 défaites, une moyenne de but allouée par match 1,70 et une moyenne d'efficacité de 928. Les Warriors en jaune, les X-Women en bleu. Bon match sur nos hommes, mesdames, messieurs. Mise en jeu rapportée par les X-Women. On remet en zone centrale. On met vers la cage des Warriors. Récupéré maintenant. Dévié. James contre la bande. Va laisser derrière à sa coéquipière Akison. James transporte le disque en zone centrale. Dépasse le milieu de la partie noire. On met en territoire adverse. C'est bloqué. Cependant, la deuxième fois sera la bonne. Van de Sapple dégage son territoire. Mais c'est bloqué au point d'appui par la défenseur des Warriors. On tente de remettre dans la clave à James. Devant la cage adverse. Tu es le les Warriors couvrent la marque 33 secondes après le début de ce match. C'est 1 à 0 Waterloo. Wow! On gafouille le disque dans le territoire du côté des x -Men. Ça fait mal. Oh là 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 là! Et puis James qui marque. Tim James cette saison, là, 9 buts, 16 mentions d'aide pour 25 points en 28 matchs. Eh bien, c'est le premier but de ce tournoi, mesdames, messieurs. Ça a pris 33 secondes. Et là, à votre écran, on va voir un pour saint effex mais c'est plutôt pour Waterloo. Et là, on va discuter avec l'entraîneur-chef des, des ex-women Ben Bertion. Là, on croit qu'il y aurait une passe avec la main ici, non dit l'officiel. On va point d'appui pour Irwin. En zone neutre, maintenant on met en territoire adverse. On va reprendre du côté de Chaud, derrière sa cage. Mauvais espace qui se retrouve au point d'appui maintenant. Moss va laisser derrière la cage. On laisse pour Irwin, derrière pour Chaud. Chaud maintenant on va remettre pour Irwin. Irwin dans son territoire. Transporte le disque. On met en zone centrale. Il 
Revirement à la ligne bleue, on s'amène dans l'enclave. C'est intercepté, Chauve à reprendre. Plutôt Orth. On met contre la bande du côté des X-Women. Au point d'appui maintenant. Un tir de loin, ce sera bloqué. On va récupérer du côté de Show. Show. Laisse pour Orth. Orth sur le plan gauche, entre les territoires adverses. S'arrête, hésite. Elle est faite seule. On va dans l'enclave. La rondelle qui est disponible, ça sera récupéré par les X-Women. Dans le coin maintenant. Bagarre pour le disque. On veut remettre dans l'enclave. On est fait seul encore une fois contre Giraudier. Rondelle disponible revient au point d'appui. Cependant, c'est récupéré par Bestick. Bestick va remettre derrière sa cage. C'est pour McCarthy. McCarthy, on remet dans l'enclave. Personne n'y est. McCarthy va reprendre le disque. La contre On remet en zone centrale du côté des X-Women. On aura beaucoup de temps là du côté des Warriors. On met devant un mauvais espace. Un dégagement qui devrait être refusé aux Warriors de Waterloo. 1-0 la marque pour... Les Warriors, 17-09 à faire à ce premier 20. Les agents rapportés par les X-Women. On remet dans le coin, il sera récupéré par McCara. McCara tente de remettre dans l'enclave, c'est bloqué par Bestic. Rondelle qui lui échappe maintenant. Les X-Women ont toujours la rondelle. Contre la bande, on laisse derrière la cage adverse, mais c'est Mitchell qui va récupérer. Mitchell derrière son filet, sous pression. On remet contre la bande. Un autre virement de la ligne pendant un tir de loin, bloqué, mais plutôt qu'il rate la cible. McCara va reprendre. McCara dans l'enclave. On fait jusqu'à dévier du côté de Switzer. Dans le coin maintenant. Dans la clave, un tir bloqué, la rondelle qui est disponible. On va reprendre du côté de Mitchell. Mitchell maintenant. Remet dans l'enclave. Un dégagement qui pourrait être refusé. Maintenant, ça ira vers Giraudy qui sera forcé d'arrêter le disque. On reprend. Van de Sarpo. Long passe transversal à Burridge. Burridge avec de l'espace sur le plan droit. Un tir capté facilement. Par la gardienne des Warriors. Une mise en jeu qui sera à sa droite. Mise en jeu à la droite, à la gauche plutôt de la gardienne des Warriors, remportée par Akison. Contre la bande, c'est intercepté, récupéré maintenant. On met au point d'appui, on va laisser derrière. Au point d'appui, un tir, ok, par Schneur. Schneur, gardé de près. Récupéré maintenant. Mais en zone centrale, c'est bloqué. Long dégagement qui sera refusé aux Warriors de Waterloo. Mise en jeu qui sera dans le territoire des champions ontariennes. Message rapporté par les X-Women. Dans le coin, Ekissin qui garde son adversaire de près. Remporte cette bagarre. On va remettre de l'autre côté. Un long dégagement, ce qui sera refusé encore une fois aux Warriors. Là, c'est un troisième. Mise en jeu rapportée par les X-Women. On perd rapidement le disque. C'est James qui a ouvert la marque. Ça mène sur le plan gauche. Gardez de près. On met dans l'enclave. Un tir dévié. Bon repli défensif de Van de Sarpo. De McPherson, désolé. Switzer maintenant. Vraiment en zone centrale. C'est pour Pitts. Pitts laisse un territoire adverse. On remporte cette bagarre contre la bande du côté des X-Women. Au point d'appui, Van de Sarpo cafouille le disque, remet simplement derrière la cage des uh, Warriors. On tente de remettre dans l'enclave, personne n'y est. Et Kessin va reprendre. Et Kessin devant pour Pritchard, c'est bloqué. Pritchard va reprendre deux contre un partiel maintenant. Pritchard laisse devant dans les patates à coup de pierre par accident. 
Au point d'appui, c'est intercepté. Non, on va laisser glisser jusqu'à ton territoire le Waterloo. On s'amène sur le plan gauche. C'est Burbage. Burbage maintenant. Remet dans la clave. Dévié, bloqué par Schnarr. Quel arrêt de la garde de Ontarienne. Les enjeux à la droite de la gardienne de Waterloo ont apporté par saint effex Bagarre au centre de la patinoire. On est en territoire adverse. Récupéré dans le territoire. Mauvais passe intercepté. Burbage maintenant dans l'enclave. Burbage le tire bloqué par Chaud en défensive. Et là, c'est Rate qui va reprendre. Rate contre la bande. Laisse en zone centrale. Ce sera intercepté. On remettra instantanément là, en territoire adverse. Ça a été tout, tout, tout. saint effex depuis le premier but des Warriors. Là. Burbage maintenant. Burbage. Oh, elle est plaquée. Il n'y a pas de peur. Oui, il y aura une pénalité, là. Il y aura une pénalité aux oh, 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 Warriors de Waterloo. La première, on dit pour avoir accroché, mais bon, on aurait pu dire. Not on Rihanna, but pretty clear penalty there. Oh, yeah, and things like that, you're not going to let side. Of course, they are letting a little bit more of the physical play come through in this university level hockey, which has direct results from PWHL. But still, blatant things like that, a hooking.
De l'autre côté, Akison. Bagarre pour le 10. Qu'est-ce que ce sera récupéré par les X-Women? Et là, il y a un échappé maintenant. C'est Seltzer, Switzer qui tente un tir. C'est bloqué, bon plus défensif. En zone neutre, Herford, gardé de près. Par Moss. Par Moses, désolé. Et là, on mettra derrière la cage de Saint FX. Pierce, qui a laissé pour Burbage. Burbage, passe transversale, qui ira en territoire adverse. C'est récupéré maintenant par les X-Women. Murray la garde de près. Baga contre le disque. En territoire des Warriors. Les Warriors, là, qui, après avoir marqué, ben, ont passé la majorité de leur temps dans leur territoire. 9-22 à faire. Ici, le premier 20, c'est 1-0 la marque pour l'Université de Waterloo. Burridge. Burridge devant la cage adverse. Tente de remettre devant. Personne n'y était. On fait demi-tour. McCloskey. McCloskey. Un tir de loin. Rate la cible. Ça m'aimerait pour Rin. Ryan, plutôt. Ryan, en zone centrale. C'est intercepté. On va reprendre chez les Warriors. Bon, là, qui se trouve maintenant derrière la cage des Warriors. C'est récupéré par Irwin. Irwin laisse devant. En main zone centrale, là, du côté des Warriors, mais personne n'y était. En territoire des Warriors, encore une fois, c'est chaud. Chaud. Un tir de loin. On tente une passe devant. C'était pour Cole. Cole qui est fait seul. Mais elle chute là devant la gardienne, Girodi. On récupère chez les CX Women. En zone centrale. Un tir de loin. Qui sera bloqué. On va reprendre du côté de Mitchell. Mitchell sur le plan droit. Tente une fin. Tente de remettre plutôt en territoire adverse pour la remise de la bande. C'est bloqué. Dans l'enclave, on est fin seul chez les X-Women. Un tir qui, encore une fois, rate la cible. 8-17 à faire au premier 20. Mon point d'appui, c'est Moses. Moses, une feinte. Moses tente un tir. C'est bloqué. Sera récupéré par Leahy. Leahy laisse derrière. Personne n'y est cependant. C'est le quatrième trio là, des X-Women qui fait son boulot. Longue passe en zone centrale. C'est pour Cole. Deux contre un des Warriors maintenant. Mauvais passe de Cole Vapritcher dans la même chance en or. Les X-Women reprennent. On tente d'y aller en zone centrale. Ça sera récupéré par Leahy qui sera fait seul ici en fin de présence. Là. Leahy perd contrôle du disque. Fennel va reprendre. Fennel laisse pour Pritchard. Pritchard sur le plan gauche va simplement remettre en territoire adverse avec 7.34 à faire à cette première période. Moss. Remet de l'autre côté. C'est récupéré par Hinch. Hinch met, laisse pour Switzer. Switzer doit replier dans son territoire pour capter ce disque. Moss maintenant, entrée de territoire. On laisse sur le plan gauche. Amaker dans l'enclave. Mauvais passe à contact avec la gardienne Schneider. Herford maintenant. Herford, oh, il y a une pénalité. On a sorti le genou. On a sorti le genou. Herford, joueur étoile là des Warriors qui est en douleur ici. Et là, Hinch qui sera chassé plutôt pour avoir trébuché. Donc, deuxième pénalité, mais du, pénalité du match. Première pénalité aux X-Women. Je vous rappelle, les X-Women cette saison en désavantage numérique. La meilleure équipe de la SUA, 90,3% de moyenne. On va reprendre à la droite de Giroudier. Pénalité ici. 7 minutes 10 secondes à faire à cette première période. Contre la bande maintenant. Bagarre pour le disque. On a pour Irwin. Irwin, passe transversale maintenant. On met en territoire adverse. C'était Orth. Orth au point d'appui. Laisse pour Raitz. Raitz, vraiment à sa gauche. Un tir de Cole qui rate le, la cible de justesse. On reprend ce côté de Orth. Orth au point droit. Laisse derrière sa cage, on met dans l'enclave. Personne hier, on est disponible, c'est récupéré par les Warriors. Il y aura oui, coup de bâton. Et bien l'avantage numérique des Warriors qui sera de courte durée. Ce sera contre 4 contre 4 pendant 1 minute 22. Les agents rapportés par les X-Women, un tir de loin, bloqué par Schnarr. On va reprendre maintenant. McCloskey perd le disque. Mitchell va reprendre derrière sa cage. Fennel plutôt. Fennel laisse pour Pritchard. Pritchard, tente de remettre vers Fennel. C'est bloqué cependant par Burbidge, la capitaine des X-Women. 
On remet maintenant à Pritchard. Pritchard gardé de près par Moses. Bagarre pour le 10 derrière la cage de saint FX. Burbage va reprendre. Burbage laisse devant. On s'amène avec ta vitesse maintenant. C'est McCloskey. McCloskey sur le plan droit. S'amène en territoire adverse. McCloskey du revers. Tente de remettre à l'enclair. Ronde est disponible. Et on a raté le filet du côté des X-Women. Toute une chance là-dessus du côté des X-Women. C'était Lothian là, qui était revenu. Qui plutôt s'est amené en attaque. C'est repris maintenant. Du côté de Pitts. Pitts qui a laissé de l'autre côté pour Moses. Moses remet vers Pitts. Pitts en territoire central maintenant. On met de l'autre côté. Ce sera récupéré par Akison. Akison laisse derrière pour Irwin. Irwin maintenant dans son territoire. Laisse devant. On met pour James dans la zone centrale. La marqueuse ici jusqu'à présent. On laisse de l'autre côté pour Herford. Herford devant pour James. Oh, on rate un filet ouvert là-dessus. 4 contre 4, je vous rappelle, mesdames, messieurs. Feeling those youngsters cheering for St. FX might not be actually from the Maritimes, but you know what? They are enthusiastically cheering for St. FX right now. Lots of uh, opportunities for young girls to come out here from Saskatoon and see, see them be them this week. We got 20 to be four on four as over now, and St. FX is briefly on a power play, but Brooklyn Cole looking to ensure they have no chance to work on that power play. She takes it down deep in the St. FX zone. Set up ahead, and now the X one with just 10 seconds left in the advantage. Nice move to the inside. A shot stopped by Schnarr. Good rush down the ice there by Hastman. Good individual effort, but Schnarr with the answer. We're seeing quite a bit of that, just back and forth, back and forth, taking the full 200 feet each way. Not a lot of whistles so far in this first period. This part of the period is moved along quickly. Just two seconds left in the Warrior penalty. So will get control. Garnett plays it back to the line, a shot through, and Schnarr with the blocker save. She reacted late, but found that puck in time. Back to five on five now with just over four minutes remaining in this first period. We are just getting started here on this GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy here on CBC. There's going to be 11 games that will culminate in the gold medal contest on Sunday evening. Right here at Merle's Belcher Place. We've got another penalty coming up here. It's going to go against Waterloo, I believe. Yeah, it is. The delayed call being made. Both goaltenders weren't sure who was on as Michaela Schnarr started to go to the bench, but got the memo in time to stick in the crease, and now we'll get the whistle and we'll hear the call. If I know my calls correctly. It looks like we're going to have a boarding call, and that's going to be number 16, Carly Orth, going off to the same day. Still another power play here in the opening period for St. FX. They're second. Shots are 7-5 in favor of the X-Women here. 3.43 remaining in the opening period. And just a quick conversation, it looks like, here between the official and now the Waterloo captain comes over to join this little huddle up. And I'm curious to see what they're talking about. I don't know if this is about certain standards for penalties or do you have any theories, Rihanna, what they might be discussing here? Could be anything from the theories of the families to, hey, how does your mom make her chocolate chip cookies? <laughs> What's your favorite Gatorade color? Uh, my longtime Canada West TV partner, Laura, Linda Walker, would appreciate that. She always left a good chocolate chip cookie reference on the broadcast. <laughs> so, yeah, I appreciate that. I think it might have been about where the face-off was going to be coming here. Yeah. Too, so. Because there was an offside and a penalty called in the same play there, or an icing and a pardon me and a penalty. So they split the difference and had the face off outside the same effects line. That cleaned up, and now the X are on the power play. It is Ork in the box for Waterloo. Van de Sample in the slot. Turnaround shot from Switzer, stopped by Michaela Schnarr. Switzer looked to tip it initially, but then still had the puck and got a good shot away. Nice floppy saves by her there. Uh, of course, anytime you're a goaltender, you don't want to be putting those rebounds out right in front of you, but she does manage to hop on it. So dangerous when you are on the penalty kill, because usually you do have a player right there from the other team on top of you. Schnarr, fourth year player with the Warriors from Waterloo. Part of the Kitchener Junior Rangers program. 
Warriors managed to clear the zone. Still a minute and 20 on this power play for St. FX as we tick down to three minutes remaining in the opening period. Switzer leading the rush down the ice. Makes a move to the inside. The backhand was going wide, but Schnarr not taking any chances there on a dangerous looking rush. And of course, all I'm going to talk about this weekend is the goaltending. When you make saves like that, it's so fantastic. This is what's going to keep the games close. That is going to be the difference maker, is what the goaltenders are able to do this weekend. It's almost as if you may have played the position yourself. I'm just going uh, you know, <laughs> to go on a limb there. That's <laughs> the shot from the line is slowed down before it reached the net. And an easy cover there for Schnarr. Face off to her left and controlled by the excellent Mackenzie Lothian. Same and across looking for Moses. He now takes over at the left point. Down the wall, Burbage across. Good stick just deflecting that pass offline. Took the shot chance away. Moses plays it back across to Burbage. Into the slot. There's a one time chance. Stopped by Schnarr. The rebound played off the outside of the net. Burbage across. Now here's a chance for. Lothian, who just chipped it wide. Just kind of yielded it there. I don't think she got everything she wanted on that shot. There was some open net oh, on the short side. Tons of open net there. 25 seconds left in the St. of X power plays. They continue to press. Cho trying to defeat a couple of players down in the corner. Gets it up to the line, but kept in. There's Moses. Dropping it off for Lothian. That shot skips wide. McCloskey now gathers, playing it down for Burbage. She comes out of the corner. Maggie Burbage into the slot. That shot blocked in front of the net. Irwin getting in front of it, and she muscles the puck out the neutral ice. Power plays over. The Warriors kill it off, and now Orth, who's just out of the box, trying to cut in front, trying to jam it short side there, but Girodier wasn't having any of that. Back behind the X women net. And out they come, but there's Herford to slow the rush. The two way forward, Leah Herford. And now in comes Hastman with a shot that flutters towards the goal. And Schnarr will grab that with the glove. 110 to go here in the first. Of course, our second uh, quarter final today will be. The marquee matchup on this opening day is, is the host Saskatchewan Huskies taking on the number one seeded Concordia Stingers, the 2022 national champs and 2023 finalists. Semi-finalists, They had a perfect season this year too, those Concordia Stingers. So the Huskies will be looking to do a little dragon slaying tonight. The giant slaying, I guess you could call them David. Women's hockey, so we need to come up with a different name. <laughs> Final minute of this opening period. Waterloo got the early goal, but certainly no lack of chances here for St. FX as they search for the equalizer. And maybe they can find it here before the end of the frame. Para working her way back up high. Now the puck slide off her stick, but Switzer follows up, able to keep it in the zone for a moment. And now it's banged off the boards and out. Back there for it, Kaya Moss, who sent it ahead, tipped by Switzer, so no icing. Warriors back in their own zone. Maybe one last attempt at a rush here for them, but they need to get out first to show to dish it off. Elastic over skated the puck, and now circles back. She'll play it out the far side as the x women were in the midst of a change. Up to center for Lauren Bell. Plays it off the boards and takes a bump for her troubles. It goes down a little awkwardly, but back to her feet in the final 10 seconds of the period. One last chance here for St. FX, busting in a wrist shot. Oh, and that sizzled just over the top of the bar. That last bit knocked wide, and that'll do it for the first period. Shots were 12-6 St. FX, but it is the Waterloo Warriors who lead this first quarterfinal by a score of one to nothing. It's time for the first intermission. You're watching the 2024 GFL Women's Hockey Youth Sports National Championship presented by Connect Energy on CBC.
Hey, change makers, change it up. Turn ideas into action. Passion into purpose. And questions into real solutions. Because whatever path you choose, here, you'll make an impact and get ready to change the world. Make your change. Discover your story at Waterloo. of every girl there's a dream gliding on the ice scoring the winning goal greatness isn't just found in the big leagues it starts right here in our communities at these ranks with these girls here's to the dreamers the believers and the ones who lace up their skates saskatoon mitsubishi empowering dreams one stride at a time parce que le sport, ça se regarde en direct. Soyez au cœur de l'action avec les web diffusions en direct d'événements sportifs. In the heart of Saskatoon, where the winters are long, hockey is not just a sport, it's a way of life. Behind every team, there's a community that supports them. At Connect Energy, we're proud to be a Saskatoon-based company that powers local businesses with natural gas options to help them thrive. We're excited to sponsor the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Join us in supporting local businesses and the future of hockey. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Parce que le sport, c'est aussi des parcours inspirants. Un regard unique sur l'humain derrière l'athlète. Exploiter mon potentiel au maximum, c'est un truc de fou. Découvrez les récits numériques et vidéos de Podium sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. Welcome back to U Sports on CBC and our coverage of the GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey National Championship presented by Connect Energy here at Merlis Belcher Place in Saskatoon. And after one period of play in this opening quarterfinal, it is the The nominees for U Sports Women's Hockey Rookie of the Year are En nomination pour le prix de la recrue de l'année en hockey féminin U Sport 2024, des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Ireland McCloskey, St. Francis Xavier University, Université St. Francis Xavier, du réseau du sport étudiant du Québec, from the RCQ, Gabriel Santer, Université Bishops University, du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Abby Lunny. Nipissing University, Université de Nipissing, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Jalen Morris, University of British Columbia, Université de la Colombie-Britannique. 
la lauréate du prix Recrue de l'année en hockey féminin U-Sport est The winner of the U-Sports Rookie of the Year in Women's Hockey is Gabrielle Santerre, Université Bishops University. Here are the nominees for the 2024 Fox 40 U Sports Women's Hockey Coach of the Year Award. Voici les candidats pour le prix de l'entraîneur de l'année Fox 40 U Sports. Des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Chris Larad, Université St. Mary's University. Du réseau du sport étudiant du Québec, from the RSEQ, Julie Chu, Université Concordia University. Du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Katie Mora, Université de Guelph. University of Guelph, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Scott Rivet, Université Mount Royal University. Le ou la lauréate du prix Fox 40 en tant qu'entraîneur de l'année est The winner of the Fox 40 Coach of the Year Award is Julie Chu, Université Concordia University. Sports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usport.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team.
for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. U Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats U Sport à Radio Canada, une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada, Nike, just do it, Fettner, Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program, Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'année U Sport, Veraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979, Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979, Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues des championnats U Sport. By Connect Energy, proud presenting partner of this U Sports Championship. Par Connect Energy, fier partenaire de ce championnat U Sport. And by GFL, proud title partner of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Par GFL, fier partenaire en titre du championnat de hockey féminin U Sport 2024. Back inside Merlis Belcher place after one period of play in this first quarter final of the GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy. It is the Waterloo Warriors who lead the St. FX X Women by score of one to nothing. Uh, and of course, the Women's National Championship going on right now, but it is also the Men's University Cup underway this week as well on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, the CBC Sports app and CB Sports, CBC Sports YouTube on all of those all opportunities to watch. Chase the glory, uh, and the schedule is uh, pretty packed with some pretty great games. As uh, we take a look here, the bracket includes the, uh, I'm trying to find it here because we don't, <laughs> don't have it right now, but It is the uh, Laval Rouge or I believe. Oh, pardon me. I'm looking at volleyball. Right now. There's so many national championships right now. I'm having a hard time keeping track of them. UNB Reds. I'll take it off. I 
that is coming up here, and that is out in Toronto. The TMU Bold are hosting that event uh, at the Madame Athletic Centre in Toronto. So that's going on out in Toronto, the Men's National Championship, the Women's National Championship, of course, just underway here in Saskatoon. And uh, Rihanna, the Waterloo Warriors got the early lead, but then their goaltender had to do a lot of work to preserve that lead as the uh, first period continued. Definitely tons and tons of saves. Of course, we're gonna get a nice replay of a lot of these going through the first period. Both Michaela Schnarr and Amaya Girardier had fantastic saves to keep their teams at this one nothing score for the Warriors. And of course, it's a one and done tournament. So, you know, you don't get any second chances to play for a medal. This is such an important game for, for both teams, of course, all the quarterfinal games, because you lose this and you're out of the hunt. So just what is that, what's that like to be in that one and done kind of environment like that? Well, in Canwest hockey, of course, they had best of three games. So you come into something like this, one and done is intense. You were seeing lots of back and forth between both teams. Goaltending is so key with this. But of course, that early goal was really fantastic for the Warriors. You just want to keep playing that hard hitting hockey, getting a lot of shots, making sure your team is as much as possible staying out of the penalty box, which the Warriors unfortunately were not able to do in that first period, netting uh, three penalties as well as the X women getting one up on the board there in terms of penalties so staying out of the box is going to be key coming here into the second period because both teams are going to be fired up coming into the next 40 minutes of play here. Teams are just returning, all the Warriors just returning to the ice, the X women I'm sure are not long after them as well as uh, have a look at this is our of course this is the women's bracket. And it is a quick sprint. Two quarterfinals here on Thursday, two more on Friday. Four games on Saturday. Those will be the consolation semifinals followed by the semifinals themselves. And then a fifth place game on Sunday followed by a bronze medal game. And it all wraps up with the gold medal final. Six o'clock local time, that's 7 p.m. Central here in Saskatoon on Sunday. So uh, lots of great action still to come. And of course, two more periods Maybe more of this one as the teams are back out and we're just about ready to go here on period number two. Of course, switching ends. And teams will be five on five. Uh, as a reminder, the shots in that first period were 12-6 in favor of St. FX. I mentioned it briefly in the first period, but this is a team that not only led the nation in shots on goal per game this season, but they've actually done, done it for the last couple of seasons. They averaged 39.2 a game, so you know, when you're playing goal against the X-Men and you're going to see a lot of pucks. You are going to be tested, that's for sure. So far, Michaela Schnarr has turned every one of them aside as the Warriors ice the puck right off the opening face-off to start the second. It is Ryan Flaherty and Rihanna Kaminsky with you here on CBC for this 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Daniela Ponticelli will be here tonight alongside Rihanna for the game between Concordia and Saskatchewan. That should be a lot of fun in a packed house, I'm sure, for that one. Warriors forced back behind their own goal here. They'll play it up the near side. Tipped to the line, but kept in by McCara. Now the chance to clear the zone, but just barely. As Herford now scoops up the puck and tries to slide it across. Back goes Bree McPherson. Pretty key shot block back in that first period to take away a Waterloo scoring chance. First and now along the boards, gets some help from Pitts who gets that puck out to center, played with a high stick there and that'll stop play. A big spread so far in shots in terms of 6-12 in favor of center backs there. Waterloo may have got that first goal, but St. FX is still coming out running. Here's Pierce looking for another one of those shots, but she is well defended there, knocked to the ice as she slides into the end boards. So she's okay, and the Warriors, meanwhile, on the counterattack. Here's Rate. That shot blocked, and Lothian felt that one. Might have caught her right at the, in the ankle area. She's a little bit hobbled, but staying in the play here as the puck is fired across through the blue paint. And Pierce. Clears the zone, trying to find Burbage behind the D, but that was well defended. Kiara Rate back in her own zone, gets it out to center. And the excellent habit, Burbage. Pass knocked down. 
by Mazur, and Kaya Mazur brings it in now. Around the Waterloo net, looking for play in the slot, but that pass was deflected. It's played right down below the goal line. Once again, here's Burbage coming up front with a shot. That stopped, but the puck's still loose. Schnarr couldn't find it, but the referee lost sight of the puck and the whistle blowing there to stop play. Gonna get a penalty on the play as well there. Did look like there was an arm up, but maybe, we well, don't see anyone going to the box here, no. so. They're keeping us on our toes here, these <laughs> stripes. Maybe the threat of a penalty there. <laughs> Yeah, the Warriors maybe getting a little bit of a break there as that puck still looked like it was loose, but the uh, referee was on the other side of the goal there, so we can see it. The Warriors moving out here, just two minutes gone by, second period, that'll be offside at the St. FX line. Next women known more of an, as an offensive attacking team, but certainly not. No slouches in the defensive department as well. Allowed fewer than two goals against per game this season. And Amaya Girodier, a big part of that as she leaves the puck behind her own net. Tipped out to center ice. Hops over a stick there on Sarah Bestick. Pritchard, or Mitchell going back for it. Comes around. They kept alive by Hinch, but now it's cleared out of the zone. And now Waterloo with a two-on-one chance. Here's Orth. Pass across, but unfortunately Murray couldn't settle that down. A little too much sauce on that pass. Orth recovers, spinning. Now leaving it in the corner for Leah Herfert. Behind the net, now thrown in front, but nobody in a gold jersey there to receive that pass. And it is lobbed back out to center ice. Just about three minutes gone in the second period as that stretch pass Misses everyone, and that'll go for icing this time against St. FX. St. FX, pretty young team. They've got 12 rookies on their squad this year. So the fact that they're here at Nationals with 12 goals, that's pretty fantastic. It speaks highly to them. Yeah, that's like, I mean, half a roster, basically. Exactly. And uh, Ben Berthium, you know, their head coach, he said, he wasn't sure as the shot off the draw is turned aside by Jiroji. He wasn't sure, you know, what it was going to be like trying to get all those newcomers integrated into the program, but he said they have matched really well and surprisingly quickly too. And I guess the proof is in the results. A top record in the AUS this season, a point ahead of the uh, UNB Reds in the regular season standings. As Hinch tries to cut through the middle, a backhand stop by Schnarr. Sneaky shot there by Hinch. It looked like she was well covered, but managed to get a good shot away. Behind the net. A little yeah, a little sneaky sneak attack there from Hinch. Goes into the corner. Now pops out. Sharp angle try from Pitts. Goes across the goal mouth. Van keeps the attack going. Way behind the net. Hinch trying to get a pass over to Leahy. Now Hinch coming up with it. Back up top for McPherson. Doesn't have a shooting lane, so just rolls it back in deep as this four check continues. James finally gets her stick on that puck, and now out come the Warriors, two on one. Tatum James has Lenard, and with her, the shot stopped, but it's still there, a rebound turned aside. And swept to the corner by Giroje. Had a little trouble with that initial shot, left a rebound there, but able to clean it up. Cole gets the pass through, the shot blocked. Scrambling for it, it's in behind, but swept out of the blue paint. The defensive play there by Pitts to clear the puck off the line. As now Waterloo takes a turn, applying some pressure. And eventually the X-Women though able to get it out. Only as far as center, however. And back in come the Warriors, Pritchard. Trying to make a move, but left the puck behind. And behind the net goes McCarthy. For Sarah, or Sarah Irwin, who shot, hits a leg. And now out come the X-Women. McCloskey got her signals crossed on the zone entry. The puck flipped back out to center. Now Cho gains control for Waterloo. Trisha Cho missed the entire regular season with an injury. 
as there's a slap shot off the glove from Schnarr, and she finds it and covers up. Little heat on that clapper from Maggie Burbage. Ooh, and good tracking by her to get that a little bit of a floating puck comes up and out of her glove and off to the side, because that's a dangerous one to be leaving there on the ice. Great work done there by Schnarr. Chance off the draw, but the shot is blocked. The Warriors, again, break. they've had a number of potential two-on-one rushes here in this opening period in six minutes or so. And Warriors obviously committing a lot into the offensive zone, and that's leaving them vulnerable on the back end. But so far, the Warriors haven't been able to exploit that as the shot from the corner is covered and held by Juro Jake. I was about to say there earlier, Trisha Cho missed the entire regular season for Waterloo. In fact, almost all the playoffs got into the Macaw Cup final against Toronto and veteran defender, they're happy to have her back. But imagine that, you miss the whole season and come back for nothing but win or go home games. <laughs> Championship. Some pressure right there is a shot that butts up high. 13.56 to play here in the second. women mentioned there that the title has eluded them over the years. It's been a while since they found the podium as well. A bronze medal in 2013 and a silver is their one appearance in the National Championship game is back in 2011. Get over the hump here this year. After an early exit at last year's National Championships and they were bounced to the quarterfinals by UBC. Flip back down to St. FX territory. Kaya Moss back for it. Quickly around to the other side. That got away from Switzer over there. And it's kept in. Here's a chance for Waterloo. Aitchison with the shot. And that is knocked down in front by Hinch. Sends the outlet to the right wing side. A little too far for Switzer. Played around to the near side. Two Warriors there against one X women But it is that single attacker, McCara, who able to win the puck, but the pass was cut off, and now in come the Warriors. There's a move made by Fennel, but the puck bouncing off the skate of Van de Sample and into the corner. Well, Van de Sample now up the boards for Makara, who swings it to the open side, and the X-Women start the attack. Pitts is dumping, hit her own teammate, I think, there. Leahy on the entry, so they have to regroup as it's flipped towards the net, just skipping wide. Irwin playing it up the wall, kept in by her fellow number five, McPherson, and now it's backhanded out and down the ice. Van de Sample tracking back for St. of X. Didn't have a lot of support there as she tried to make the pass, and the Warriors get it. Here is Cho with a shot through traffic, stopped by Giro J. Some hard hitting Waterloo offense here in this second period. They're getting lots of chances, getting lots of shots on net here. Well, St. FX like, pride themselves on their, their speed, their tempo game. I don't think they've really been able to get out and skate yet in this game. I don't know. What do you think about that? Uh, no, yeah. they really haven't had that many chances. Their opportunities have mostly come from the cycle, right? They're, they're yeah. playing the ozone. Bestick rattles that off the boards. As we approach the eight-minute mark of the opening or the second period of play here. Waterloo still with a one-nothing lead as Pierce comes in with a high shot, blockered away by Schnarr. Burbage trying to take it away in the corner for St. FX. Working on Faith Mitchell, knocked to the ice there. Standout rookie for the Warriors. Selected to the OUA all-rookie team this year was Faith Mitchell. Now comes up with the puck and sends it up ahead. Four check there is Rates. The Warriors able to get away from her, but following up on the play, Andrea Murray, who cycles it back down to the corner. For Orth, Carly Orth kicking it up the boards, trying to get it to Fennel, but Pierce steps in the lane and takes it out. The Warriors right back on it though, Andrea Murray driving wide. Pass into the middle, just not quite in the wheelhouse for Orth, but her backhand shot kicked out and the rebound sent over the net. Close call there for Murray. 
The puck bounces out to center. In effects trying to regather here at center ice. In comes Hasman. Her shot bouncing around in the slot. Never got to the net. Now Aitchison winds back in her own zone around the boards looking for Orth. Gets cut off, but the puck does get out over the blue line. Vivian Hinch over for Kaya Moss. Dumps it into the far corner. Quickly back there for it goes Aitchison. Playing it off the boards and out of the zone. Good job there by Garnet to do just enough to prevent the Warriors from getting the puck. Off the boards, a chance for Switzer tried to play the bank shot. Hinch's bid is blocked and it bounces out. Paige Rin is late in her shift, so she just fires the puck in deep and makes her way to the Waterloo bench. As we hit the halfway mark of the second period, Waterloo with the one nothing lead. Mazur slides it in behind the Waterloo goal. She's on her way off the ice. A little bit extra room for the Warriors to move it out, but they can't get through center as it's now St. FX doing a little bit better job of clogging up the neutral zone. We've seen a lot of good physical play here in this second period, especially both teams are playing a little bit harder. You can see they came out flying after that first intermission. There's a shot from the slot just wide by McCara. From the boards, kicked out. Good left, right pad save by Schnarr there. Great reflexes on that stop. McPherson from the point. Just pounds it back in for Leahy in front. Off the stick of McCara to the far boards. St. FX looking for that equalizer towards the net from McPherson. Carried away by the defensive stick. Into the corner it goes. Now it's tied up in the trapezoid. Coming away with it. And all the way around to the top. And across to McPherson. Ganya lurking in the slot, looking for the return feed, but it winds up bouncing into the corner. Play to the line and now out finally for Waterloo. They need a change in a bad way and they will get it here. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the second. Chiara Rate cuts off that clearing attempt then gets knocked to the ice. Richard falls up, centering it off the skate of Murray who had a chance at Connor last shift in a very similar spot as we've got a whistle and a ooh, the hand pass signal being made. And that will take us to the media timeout here in the second period as Waterloo leads St. FX 1 0. You are watching GFL 2024 New Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy on CBC. Vous avez le pouvoir de provoquer le changement au sein de notre climat. Back inside Merlis Belcher Place, Waterloo Warriors leading the St. FX X Women 1 0 here midway through the second period of play. St. FX head coach Ben Berthium, uh, pretty proud of his bunch, this group that missed four of its top six forwards throughout the AUS playoffs and still managed to get to the final and make it to the national championship. And St. FX uh, generating some chances here Fantastic. in this uh, second period. Fantastic chances, of course, Maggie Burridge. She's got an AUS second team conference all-star, but then you have AUS all-rookies, both Ireland Crossley and Mackenzie Lothian getting some great chances as well. And it is Waterloo still with the game's only goal, scored way back at the 33-second mark of the opening period by Tatum James. And the Warriors now looking to add to that advantage and nearly another chance at a two-on-one. Been a lot of outlet passes that have had some promise, but they just haven't been able to put the rush together yet. St. 
Fairfax maybe playing with a bit of fire there, but so far they haven't been burned. It's puck now behind the Waterloo net, thrown out front, but tipped away by Pritchard as she clears it out to center. That bounces off the stick of Kiera Rate. Hinch firing it back out to center ice. Burbage turning and wheeling it in deep. St. FX making changes here, trying to get back to the puck in the offensive zone. Played up for Rate, who missed the pass, and the shot skips wide. Racing over there was Moss, but she couldn't keep it in. And now Rate speeding down the ice. A big collision there between Rate and Hinch. Is this men's hockey or women's hockey, or, Brianna? That was a serious collision. <laughs> Just talking about the physical play of this game, too. We are seeing quite a bit of it. I like, too. That was just two players going for a loose puck, and they came together at the same time. So No harm, no foul. Yeah, exactly. Well, well said. Carly Orth has it knocked off her stick. That might have been the biggest crowd reaction we've had since the goal back in the yeah. first period. A lot of oohs and awes at that bit of physicality. A lot of fans aren't quite used to seeing that yet in women's hockey, but get used to it. You're watching PWHL now, and that is starting to trickle down to the other levels of hockey. Oh, big time. Is it ever. Anna McCara busting into the zone. Ben Berthume referred to her as a little spitfire on the ice uh, yesterday in the introductory press conference. Pretty good badge of honor, I think, for any player. Same effects with it at their own line. Splits her up ahead, finds McCara weaving into the Waterloo zone. Pitts takes the drop pass and her shot off a stick and out and it's getting feisty now right on cue there's Anna McCara mixing it up with a couple players a little bit larger than her down below the goal line you like to see it. you got to stand up for yourself and of course this is national championship hockey and do or die game right now neither team is going to be letting up everybody's needed right now as they want to keep going in this tournament you lose a game you're in the consolation you win you get to keep going this is what they play for. You start the season, every team talks about it. We want to play for a national championship. Obviously, you want to win your conference, but this, the Golden Bath Trophy, is what they all crave when they begin the season. Under six to go now here in this second period. Waterloo still with the one nothing lead as the puck tied up along the boards in the X-Women's zone. And pops loose for Van de Sample, who makes a nifty little play to herself off the end boards. That Takes some skill and nerve. Switzer now with a shot, maybe a pass attempt. That's off a skate and out of play with 5.29 to go in the second. No points for field goals like that here in hockey, unfortunately. <laughs> a couple more points up on board. I, in one of my previous lives, I did some uh, in-stand hosting for the Medicine Hat Tigers. And I got a lot of ribbing because uh, during an intermission promo, I could not get a shirt over the screen to the fans in the end <laughs> seats. It's really high up there, folks. <laughs> it's really high up there. And t-shirts don't have a lot of weight to them. Here come the Warriors. Pass across is cut off as Rate was driving the net there, but Puck never arrived. And now tied up behind the St. FX net. Richard tangled up there with Moses. And the X-Women come away with the Puck. Flipped ahead by McCloskey, and now here's Burridge skating onto it. Into the middle, Baggy Burbage, but she can't get a shot away. Well defended by the Warriors, but now Burbage with a stick lift down there nearly stole it back. Played to the line, but held in there by Moss. Her shot takes a St. FX bounce, and now a backhand try, another chance sent right through the blue paint. Oh man, a couple of good looks there for the X-Women, but no results as Rate. But she was trying to drag the puck back to her own feet there and then just rolls it in deep. Now she'll make her way off the ice. Out of the corner comes Murray with a shot that is blocked. And now Ganya out to center, but that goes off a stick and high up into the stands. Hope they're, everyone's paying attention down there. <laughs> Good heads up hockey by the fans right there. Well, for folks who don't know, and of course we got fans tuning in from all across the country here, this building, Earl's Belcher Place, opened in 2018. 
to start the 2018-19 season. In that first season, they actually had netting all the way around. But divas like me complained that we couldn't see the action well enough, <laughs> so they took it down. <laughs> so now the fans have to be a little more alert uh, uh, along the sides of the rink. Yeah, but it keeps you in the game. Exactly. You should be engaged. That's what you paid for the ticket for, right? Buck in front of the bench area, and now stolen away by the X-Women. And to clarify, it wasn't so much not being able to see, it was with the cameras trying to shoot highlights. The, the mesh really got in the, really messed with the focus on the cameras. the cameras. Yeah, yeah, we always do that. They're really expensive, but they still can't do it. <laughs> Irwin can't get into the St. FX zone, but quickly back there is Herford to neutralize the potential counterattack. In comes James now with a shot and a blocker saved by Girodier. Guided the, guided the rebound into the corner. Centering pass, but only blue jerseys out front, and the puck is swept out of the zone. Three minutes remaining in the second period. Time quickly moving here in this middle frame, as we've got a whistle uh, behind the play. It was a delayed offside call, I believe, there, and the players on the near side of the ice didn't get the memo, so uh, they even made it an icing call. So they're gonna call that intentional offside, I think. That's why they bring the face off all the way back down. Yeah, kind of nice when that happens and you get it all the way down 200 feet to the other end. Face off to the right of Michaela Schnarr. And the Warriors control. Faith Mitchell played around the boards and it's chipped out of the zone. Maggie Burbage will go back for St. FX. I'm sure the X woman would love to get a tying goal here before the end of this period and not have to head to the third with their, you know, their metal hopes on the line in the final period. Bestick going back, but credit Waterloo, though, they have really buckled down defensively in this second period, I would say. Shots are just 6-5 Waterloo in this period. After St. FX got 12 on goal in the first, in come the Warriors, here's a chance for Cole, adding to their shot tally, but a save there by Girodier. That one hit right in the bread basket. Easy saves like that always bring up the goalie's confidence, which is what they like to see during the game, of course, like this. And uh, actually, Jordier, it was nice to see her get out of her crease and play the puck earlier in that play as well. Haven't seen a lot of that in this game. You're right. We haven't really seen either goaltender venture out of their crease much no. at all. And anyone who's watched a lot of Huskies hockey, as we have, gets pretty used to seeing that as both of their goalies are very comfortable playing the puck. Of course, first time for both these teams playing in this building as well, and goaltenders who don't know those boards might want to be a little more extra cautious too for fear of getting caught by a funny bounce or something like that. Yeah, and usually that's something you would test out in a warm-up is, you know, seeing how everything's going to bounce off the boards, especially through the corners. Garnet bringing the puck in for St. FX here under two minutes left in this second period. Can't get that puck towards the goal, though, and out come the Warriors once again. Fourth, flipping it right in on goal. Girodio steers that aside. Uh, Excellent player there, lost an edge in the corner. That was Mazer. She slowly gets back to her feet. Kept in at the far point. Now Mazer back there, but her clearance is cut off. Here's Herford with a little toe drag, but she is hit hard, and that was up high as well. And so there going, is going to be a penalty here against St. FX. I think less about the actual contact, the more about where the contact happened. What, what would you say, Rihanna? Yeah, it looked, it was close to some head contact. I'm not sure what the call was there, but if I do remember my stats correctly, Bree McPherson herself, who uh, took that penalty for St. FX, is about six feet tall. So she's got some height on most of the other players out there on the ice. Yeah, you're correct. Bang on there, six foot even for the rookie defender. For St. FX, so to the box goes McPherson, to the power play go the Warriors. And it is a double minor, so must have been head contact. Good, job. Good pick up their partner. As we're into the final minute of the second, so big opportunity here for Waterloo yeah. to get themselves some cushion, as they say. The wrist shot through, that got through the traffic, but Girodier did well to find it. So if Waterloo doesn't score here in the last 44 seconds, they'll have just under three minutes of power play to start the third. 
And with it being a double minor two, they could score in the first two minutes and there's still gonna be another two minutes left in that penalty for McPherson to serve. The opportunity here for Waterloo, to say the least. Is it thrown in front of Jam play? And I believe Gerodier got her left pad on that second chance. Fennel gets a return feed, top of the zone to the right circle for Herford. Back to Jesse Fennel. Down low, James Herford lurking in the slot, waiting for it. Now looking back door, they just can't get it through to her. It's bouncing around and covered by Gerodier and a mass of humanity now in the crease as tempers flare at the whistle. Rodier made that save, was kind of bouncing around right in the blue paint, dangerously, dangerously. And of course, everybody's going to be heated getting in front of that goaltender, keeping everybody away from the goaltender, which is nice to see. You see it quite a bit in men's hockey, standing up around the crease, and it's nice to see it filter down into women's. Leah Herford, uh, certainly a player that the St. FX defense needs to be aware of at all times. He first team. OUA All-Star, and I mentioned it earlier, last season she was the OUA Player of the Year and a first-team All-Canadian. Uh, last year she's had 36 points in just 23 games, which is a Warrior single-season record. Numbers a little bit down this year, but still ever dangerous as that shot by Orth just over top of the net. Now a sharp angle bid skips wide. Now Herford with a chance. Can't put it home and a pass across over the stick of Orth at the buzzer. Furious action here in the final minute around the St. FX goal. But the Warriors can't get one. They will, however, have two minutes and 56 seconds remaining on this double minor to begin the third. As we hit the break, you're watching the 2024 GFL U Sports National Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy on CBC. It's that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> have the power to inspire and impact the climate. Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visite le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. And Baird is traveling the official championship. 
Welcome back to you. Sports on CBC, the our coverage of the National Women's Hockey Championship. Waterloo leading St. FX 1-0 each year. U Sports presents a series of major honors to the top student athletes in each sport. Here are the 2024 U Sports Hockey Community Service Award nominees and winners of the 2024 U Sports Player of the Year Award. The nominees for the Marion Hillard Award to the student who excels in hockey, academics, and community involvement are Les candidats pour le prix Marion Hillard pour l'excellence dans le hockey, les études, et l'engagement communautaire sont Des Sports Universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Shailen McFarlane, University of Prince Edward Island, Université de l'Île du Prince Edward, Du Réseau du Sport étudiant du Québec, from the RSEQ, Emmy Fecto, Université Concordia University. Du Sport Universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Emily Baxter, Toronto Metropolitan University, Université Métropolitaine de Toronto, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Jenna Merck, University of Regina, Université de Regina. La lauréate du prix Marion Hillard pour l'engagement communautaire est... The winner of the Marion Hillard Award for Community Service is... Emmy Fecto, Université Concordia University. The nominees for the Broderick Trophy as the U Sports Outstanding Women's Hockey Player of the Year are A nomination pour le trophée Broderick comme athlète de l'année U Sport en hockey féminin, des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Lillian George, University of New Brunswick, Université de la Nouveau-Brunswick, du réseau du sport étudiant du Québec, from the RCQ, Gabrielle Santerre, Université Bishops University, du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Katie Chomiak. Nipissing University, Université de Nipissing, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Cameron Drever, University of Saskatchewan, Université de la Saskatchewan. La lauréate du trophée Broderick décerné à la joueuse de l'année en hockey féminin U Sport est The winner of the Broderick Trophy as the U Sports Player of the Year in Women's Hockey is Gabrielle Santerre, Université Bishops University. FNPA and Indigenous communities are working together to develop a cleaner energy workforce, which is crucial to achieving a net zero energy future by 2050. Meaningful Indigenous engagement and consultation are essential for this goal to be realized. The vision is to pursue energy sovereignty by expanding wind, solar, energy storage, and new nuclear technologies across Canada. Collaboration and collective efforts are necessary to decarbonize our economy particularly in regions such as Alberta and Saskatchewan. Become a valued general or industry member and join us in this important work today. FNPA, the pathway to powerful opportunities. of winning behind us, that means a lot of winning numbers. Numbers like over 1,200 organizations funded and 12,000 groups supported. Winning numbers like 6 million given away annually in community grants. 
Winning numbers like 196 athletes sent to Olympic and Paralympic Games. And the winningest number of all, the $1.4 billion given back through sport, culture, and recreation. And we're just getting started. Can you tell us your experience with online bullying? When I was younger, the girls started to pick on me. I felt really alone because I just had no one to talk to. We have a little surprise for you. I've always been drawn to Narissa for her calm, cool energy. She's kind, she's compassionate. I hope that one day I can be half the woman that Narissa is today. That's really meaningful to me. Your words have impact. Be kind online. At Viterra, we believe in the power of connection. Our world-leading agriculture network connects producers and consumers to supply top quality food ingredients each and every day. Our team takes great pride in working closely with farmers to help feed the world. It's something we've been doing for over 100 years. And as an industry leader, we're dedicated to playing a critical role in meeting the needs of a growing world. Because together, we're stronger and achieve more. Parce que le sport, c'est bien plus que des résultats. C'est aussi des analyses et des dossiers qui nous plongent au cœur de l'univers complexe et en mutation. C'est vraiment incroyable. Suivez les actualités sportives sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. U Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats U Sport à Radio Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the Government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettner. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Fier partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U-Sports championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U-Sports. By Connect Energy, proud presenting partner of this U-Sports championship. Par Connect Energy, fier partenaire de ce championnat U-Sports. And by GFL, proud title partner of the 2024 GFL U-Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Par GFL, fier partenaire en titre du championnat de hockey féminin U-Sports 2024. We are back. We are back inside Merlis Belcher Place as the second intermission continues here in this opening quarter final of the GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy here on CBC. Ryan Flaherty and Rihanna Kaminsky with you. Uh, Rihanna, Waterloo with the goal in the opening minute of the first, and that's all we've seen so far through 40 minutes. Uh, well, it's been a pretty entertaining game despite just the, the one goal on the board. The physicalness of this game has been so fantastic to see. It is quite a bit going on. We are getting it filtered down through the PWHL of more of a physical game, which is so fantastic. It's great seeing in women hockey. Tons of hits. Of course, you don't want to see anything too crazy. We've had some head contact, some tripping, some hooking. Uh, but those nice coincidental ones that we've been seeing uh, along the boards, so cool to see. So uh, put on your uh, your strategy cap here. Look at it this third period. Uh, Waterloo has the lead. They're looking to finish this one out and uh, advance to the semifinals. Stain effects obviously looking to do their own uh, bit of comeback here in the in the third. So what do uh, let's start with the excellent. What do they need to do to generate some offense here and, and find a goal, at least one to, to get this thing tied? Gotta best that goalie, of course. Uh, leaving those little rebounds in the crease along the inside of the net, you need to have a body in there because we're seeing. Both both goaltenders do it. They are hopping on that second uh, rebound, but get a body in there, get that puck in towards the net, and just keep shooting. Both ways, they're going to need to be seeing a lot more of that around the net. We've uh, we mentioned the fact that St. FX is known as a, as a high shot volume team and an up-tempo offense. 
their, their offense such as it is, obviously they haven't scored yet, but their chances have been mostly generated though off the cycle, not so much as a product of their speed so far here. Um, what has Waterloo do, done to kind of slow down this, this high-flying St. FX team? We're seeing good block shots both ways. Waterloo's getting quite a few of those and just lots of change up in the neutral zone. We're seeing a lot of that slow down the play both ways, but I mean, two on ones have gone both ways for both teams quite a bit. Yeah, it looks like they're, they're would you say maybe see a little bit of those nerves today too in some of the execution departments? I think there's been you know, some pucks bobbled, some some plays, some rushes that looked like they were promising that kind of haven't happened. How much of that do you think is just the, the stage and, and being in this environment? Especially with it being a do or die game, you lose the game, you're into consolation, but if you win, you keep going. Of course, there's going to be tons of nerves in here, John. It's a do or die situation. You've got a fourth team versus a fifth team. It's so close right now, of course. We only had that one goal 33 seconds in. Other than that, goaltenders have been standing so tall on their heads. So it's just really, really close. You're seeing tons of nerves both ways, I think. And we're going to see these ladies coming out for the third even hotter than they did in the second, which was a really fast-paced, hot, hot, hot period. I, I would say that said, you know, in fact, that we can see some evidence of maybe the, 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 the nervousness and, and, the, and the pressure. Waterloo certainly doesn't look like a team that hasn't been on this stage before. They get that early goal, and that certainly, I'm sure, helped them as well settle some of those nerves and just get into the game. Big time. I mean, watching this game right now, you would never imagine that they have not been at a national championship before because they look like they belong here. Of course, they're hosting next year, too, so that's a feeling that you want to have. And, and I mean, this, this team for Sean Regan, it's, it's, a, it's a veteran group. A lot of leaders in the room, you know, uh, uh, a very similar roster to the one that they had last year as well. So um, even the fact that they haven't been to Nationals before, they certainly have a lot of experience in that uh, lineup in, in OUA play. St. FX, meanwhile, we've talked about the fact they haven't been able to, to get that the, the ultimate prize. But uh, again, a team that's been here before, uh, but maybe getting frustrated a little bit by that Waterloo defense at Golden. Definitely, we're seeing some of that. Uh in effects always a bridesmaid never a bride they have not won a championship yet could this be the year well we've got 20 more minutes to find out let's quickly talk just briefly about the other quarter final that's coming up later tonight obviously the the one that the huskies fans have been looking forward to for a long time here as the host saskatchewan huskies will take on the uh number one seeded concordia stingers not just number one seed for this tournament but number one team in the country pretty much all season long 25 and older in the regular season they are vulnerable. They did lose twice during the playoffs in their two best of three series, uh, which they ultimately won. But do you think that there's an opening here for the Huskies to, to pull off the upset? Well, Huskies are well rested. Unfortunately, they did lose out in that round against the Dinos probably about a month ago, yeah. I think it was. So they've had a lot of time to rest their bodies, you know, recover any injuries. They're going to be pretty healthy coming in and a month off that's going to make you really hungry yeah i know steve cook uh, the huskies head coach said after the loss to calgary which was in the uh, canada west quarterfinals here at merlis belcher place this is a really tough tough loss they won the first game of that series and then just couldn't score again after that got shut out games two and three um and a veteran veteran team that had aspirations going a lot deeper into the canada west playoffs Steve Cook said he wanted them to sit with that loss for a while before they got back on the ice and practice. He wanted them to feel the sting of that and use that moving forward. But he said the last couple weeks they've really been going hard practice to the point where it's gotten a little feisty out of practice. So I think they're ready to play a, a team that's not themselves. Uh, should be a lot of fun. This kind of a team coming in. Julie Chu just uh, named uh, U Sports Coach of the Year last night. Uh, she's going to have them ready to go. And that is going to be a big, big task for the Huskies. But uh, they also have the Canada West Player of the Year in Cameron Drieger between the fights. When you have a great goaltender, as you know, that can really be the great equalizer. So. Exactly, and that's exactly what we're seeing here in this same effects and Waterloo game is fantastic goaltending, which is holding that score at one nothing for Waterloo. As the Warriors return to the ice, they are uh, occupying the home bench here for this game, uh, but they're skating out of the visitor tunnel, although nobody's skating out of the, uh, the, home, the Huskies tunnel. Uh, down to our broadcast right. I guess that's going to be exclusively reserved for just the Huskies as both of the teams coming out from the uh, corners to our broadcast left. A reminder that the Warriors are on the power play here to begin this third period. Uh, the double minor for Tabri McPherson 
uh, assessed with uh, just over a minute remaining in the second. And so the Warriors can score, and especially if they can score here in the first 56 seconds, might have a chance to double up. But you know they'd at least like to get one here, and that would help them breathe a little easier in this third. Definitely, and with them being down one nothing, you want to score as early as you can so you have the rest of the third period to net that other goal and get yourself up ahead. Very similar to uh, Waterloo's uh, Ontario Championship game. That was the Macaw Cup, like I mentioned on Saturday. That was a one-goal game. A 2-1 victory over the Toronto Varsity Blues, who again are also here at the tournament and will be playing in the second quarterfinal tomorrow against the UNB Reds. Another former Olympian. In fact, I love the subplot here between Julie Chu coaching Concordia and Vicky Sunohara coaching Toronto, a couple of former Olympians who are on opposite sides of the Canada-USA rivalry. They're kind of the, the starters, they're sort of the pioneers of that rivalry. So a little extra subtext. It'll be interesting to see if their teams end up meeting this week. Somewhere along the way. Our other quarterfinal, by the way, tomorrow at 1 o'clock local time, 3 o'clock Eastern, will be the UBC Thunderbirds, the Canada West champions against the Montreal Cataban, who are the RSEQ finalists. You see the number two seed, Montreal the number seven seed. So that'll be tomorrow at one o'clock local. That's one o'clock mountain now after the clock's all changed uh, over the weekend. Of course, if you don't know, here in Saskatchewan, we don't change the clocks. So when you live here, you have to remind yourself of that. Like a hockey game, you know, hockey night in Canada starts an hour earlier. Uh, <laughs> the, the time changes uh, in March. You gotta tune in an hour sooner. Shout out to Waterloo. We have been informed there's a watch party going on yeah. with 50 plus people there. So nice of them to be cheering on their team at home. Back in Warrior Land. Looks like some excess uh, fluid on the ice here. As we got the uh, lines people out doing some extra work with the squeegees before we can get ready to start this third period. And that's, of course, important. We don't want to be skating through puddles or trying to make a pass through a puddle. Uh, quite a bit of water yeah. there too, holy smokes. Yeah, Zem, the, 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 the might have got out just a little bit late in that intermission, so either way. Um, but again, we, uh, yeah, shout out to the folks uh, back at Waterloo. I, I'm sure there's likely got to be some kind of a watch party for St. FX as well, but whether you're cheering on the X-Women or the Warriors or one of the other six teams here, or maybe you just are a big fan of Women's hockey and hockey in general. Glad to have you alongside here this week. Brian Flaherty, Rihanna Kaminsky with you as we are now ready to go. Third period underway from Earless Belcher Place. It is the opening quarterfinal of this GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy Waterloo. Got the only goal way back at the 33 second mark of the first period and now on the power play here to start the third. Looking to give themselves a little insurance move on to the semifinals. Fennel down for Herford, across through the slot, shot by James Stock by Jiro J. Best save of the game so far, given the situation. Herford down low, comes across, but James had cheated in too far to the middle. Back for Leah Herford. Jesse Fennel at the line. James plays it off her skate, now cycles it down to the corner. Door Pritchard, and now Fennel gets it back from Herford. Fennel trying to slide it into the slot. That rolls down to the end boards. Pritchard plays behind the goal, past Herford. But racing over there was Lenardin to keep the play alive. Down to the second half of the power play of the double minor now. James to the front of the goal, and a glove stop there by Amaya Giroge. Beauty, beauty of the glove stop there. Just makes it look so trivial and just another day stopping shots there for Girardier. Yeah, there was a little deflection there and uh, did well to snare that puck. Looks like Waterloo's really trying to get that down low bumper play going here. And so far, St. FX has been able to defend it as Cho settles the puck at the line. A warrior dumped away from the play. That's Rate back to her feet and she'll post up in the slot. Inch knocks her 
checked down. That was Cole. This is down to a minute 20 left in the power play. Cho, fan on the shot. And her pass goes off the skates of Orth. The chance for the X-Women to clear, but stripped away by Rate. Pass through the low slot, though, eludes Cole. He gets to the buck now. Blind pass out front is intercepted, and Hinch finally clears the zone, and the X-Women get some fresh legs out on the kill here with a minute left. However, they're gonna get a break now as the off pass there results in an icing call against Waterloo, and nothing, something you never wanna do on a power play. No, and by the goaltending, uh, Shinar herself, Ices the puck, but nice to see the goaltenders getting out and actually playing the puck, getting themselves a little more involved. Maybe, maybe we haven't seen her handle the puck for that for a reason. Uh, <laughs> that's not fair. That's not fair. That's just a missed pass. That's all that was. She's been really good there between the pipes today for Waterloo. And the Warriors still with a little time left on this power play. Trying to make something of it here with a one nothing lead in the third. James, who scored that goal. Trying to go give and go, chipped it wide as the St. Effect stick took that pass away. And it's played the line and out. Just 20 seconds left now in the Warrior power play. Big lift here for St. Effects if they can kill this one off. And looks like they will as it's up to the Waterloo line for Burbage. Burbage with a toe drag and a shot off his stick and over the net. McCara now just off the bench, chasing that puck down behind the Waterloo net. He gets cut off. Erford lost her stick on the play, but the Warriors get possession. James, though, stripped by Burbage, who then kind of tripped herself up there in the corner. Fennel moves it out. Power play's over, so missed opportunity there for the Warriors, who do still have possession. Here's James dragging it into the zone. Erford sends it behind the St. FX net. James' centering pass doesn't arrive. And now the X-Women look to counter. Stretch pass through the middle, looking for Switzer, but she got closed down on a good defensive play there by Jesse Fennel. Second time that the X-Women have nearly sprung a player on a break between the two defenders, but just, just couldn't quite get it to happen there. Really loving those stretch passes. Here's a shot from Moss, tipped just wide. I think that hit a warrior stick, in fact, but Missed the net. Close call there for St. FX. As McCara tumbles to the ice. And Aitchison now flips the puck into the X Women territory. Kaya Moss from behind her own net. Lays it up ahead to Hinch. Now Ashlyn Garnett circling back. A little bit of trouble with the puck in her skates as she got pestered there by McCarthy. Now Irwin. Playing it up to the X-Women line. Sarah Irwin battling for it at center. And the St. of X, X-Women come up with it. Into the zone with a chance for Hasman, but that is off a shin guard. And banked out to center. Warriors continuing to clog up the shooting lanes here. Just 18 shots for a St. of X team that averaged over 39 a, season, a game this season. And a number that actually ticked up over 40 during the playoffs be at a much smaller sample size. Rates can't get a pass into the slot. Both teams, in fact, doing a pretty good job defending the front of their own goal here today. McPherson playing it up ahead. That gets past Pritchard at the St. FX line, but it did go off her glove, so a hand pass stopping play with 14.48 to go in the third. A little bit of a slowdown on shots here, but still some good chances by St. FX. As you saw in that nice little replay there. But 18-18, kind of low. Kind of low going into the third period. It is, it is. And like I said, especially for St. FX. They're not used to having, they used to have about, usually have about 30 by this point in the game. Yeah. At least. Waterloo though, continuing to possess the puck here despite not scoring on that double minor power play. Not giving the x women a lot of time to have the puck on their sticks. It's a clearing pass cut off by Kiara Rate. He forces St. of X back in their own zone. Moses now. Up to Maggie Burbage. Can't get the pass through. The clearance is cut off 
briefly, but now out over the line. Moss fires it back in for St. FX. They're just changing up their forward line, or at least two-thirds of it here. Burbage still on the ice, pressing the issue. Warriors will clear the zone, though. Herford, one hand on the stick, swatting at the puck as it slides down to the St. FX line. Past the six-minute mark of the third period. X-Women have been thwarted thus far in their offensive pursuits. Moss, rink wide onto the stick of Camden Switzer, who plays it off the boards and into Waterloo territory. James has her pass cut off. There's a chance, Pitts, but that got right through. I don't know if Pitts got a stick on it, but it stayed out either way. Close call there for the X-Women. I'm gonna give Schnarr credit for a save there. Something we've seen the X-Women try that a few times here this afternoon as they'll have a player right at the edge of the crease and try to pick that puck out of the corner and deflect it home. But so far the Warriors have been able to neutralize that. So we've got a nice in call here. They've really been able to, again, neutralize them through the neutral zone as well. It seems like unless they're getting that big stretch pass, uh, trying to get a forward past those two defenders, they haven't been able to get out into Waterloo territory. Is there an adjustment you can see that St. FX needs to make in the O zone, or is it just a matter of just to keep continuing to do what they're doing? And I can do what they're doing, but it's almost like they're a step or two behind some of those passes. Bestick firing it back into St. FX territory. Van de Sample across from McPherson. And next women again, though, not cleanly. Garnet mishandled that pass, and women in blue will have to retreat once again. Hello, Van de Sample. With her partner McPherson now through the middle, but off the stick of Mazur. Following up is Hastman. She can't get in cleanly though. The Warriors just clogging up the middle. In comes Bestick, working her way around. Mazur shot scores! Sarah Bestick labeled for the top corner. There's that cushion the Warriors were looking for. It's 2 0 here in the third. Beautiful, beautiful insurance score. That nice top shelf where mom keeps the peanut butter. Beautiful walking into that zone. She had that lane all to herself. It was nothing but net. Would you believe me if I told you Sarah Bestick did not score a goal this season? And in fact, that is her first career U Sports goal and it comes here in a national quarterfinal in the third period. I mean, if you're gonna score a goal, this is where you wanna be doing it. What a moment for Sarah Bestick. Two nothing War Waterloo as the hole gets a bit deeper now for St. FX and yeah, it's just two, but the way this game has gone, that has to feel like three or four right now. Waterloo will be riding off that high. <laughs> Well, that is a memory for Sarah Bestick that is going to stay with her for a long, long time. First career U Sports goal as Burbage gets a shot in on Schnarr, but right to that Warriors crest, and she hangs on. And we're not talking about rookie here. This is a third-year player, Sarah Bestick. So, you know, final week of her third season in a Waterloo uniform. And uh, she gets it done, another Waterloo native. So big, big moment for her, the third year defender. So of course not necessarily expected or looked upon to produce a lot of offense, but when your D can chip in like that at a moment like this, big, big bonus. Huge bonus. That's really what you want to see, especially when you are trying to go for a national championship, is having those players that maybe not necessarily are who you look to for scoring, getting those goals, getting those chances on that. Waterloo hungry for more, coming back into the St. FX zone. And really since that first period when we saw the excellent really generate a per pretty good amount of offensive zone time, Waterloo has really been able to kind of dictate this play ever since the start of the second period. They definitely have been. You're seeing a little bit more nerves out of the X-Men. It feels like just a little more anxious, like they're really trying to get that goal and it's forcing them to, you know, bumble with the puck a little bit more. Some sticks being squeezed rather tightly. Can't, can't turn those into matchsticks anymore because they're not made out of wood, but you know. But time certainly becoming an issue here for St. FX. However, they still have plenty of it. 10.45 to go here in the third, but they 
need to find something to give them a little positive feeling right now. They had just eight shots on goal here over the last 30 minutes of this game. Very out of character as this is an icing call against Waterloo, 10.35 exactly is what remains here in the third. But again, this high octane St. FX offense, they can click at any moment. So exactly, they just need one thing to happen to bring out that intensity, just whether it be, you know, a really fantastic shot, a goal obviously is gonna light everybody up or even maybe a really good hit on someone. Just something that's gonna be a bit of a game changer for St. FX. In the draw here, Burbage trying to swing it towards the goal. She gets shut down immediately. McCloskey backhand pass is intercepted by Mitchell. A couple of standout rookies there on opposite sides. Now at center is Orth in a battle with Pierce. Gets it ahead for Brooklyn Cole. The Warriors forward now circling. And behind the goal, the wraparound is turned aside. Behind the net is McCloskey winding her way out up ahead, but too far for Burbage. And the Warriors turn back the other way. Rate cutting into the middle. Kira Rate with a shot. Stuck. Rebound is still sitting loose, and it's clear to the boards. Oh boy, that was tantalizing there for Waterloo. Cole with a move to the middle. Wrist shot deflected wide. Brooklyn Cole, the Warriors captain, saying, climb on my back. Let's go for a third. Up top, but too high as that came out of the zone. And now Aitchison retreats up ahead. There's a little bit of a, a bump there at the St. FX line and sent back in deep. Right up the center here, Moses. Missed that return pass. Back down. This is Herford. Lee Herford backhand feed cut off by Mazur coming back defensively. Under nine minutes to go in the third. Waterloo continuing to force the issue in the St. FX zone. And the far corner is Bell. Laying it behind the net to Herford. Didn't get the centering pass through. Laid up the boards, cut off there though by James. And it comes up high to Irwin who winds and fires. Tip stopped by Girodier. Here's a chance in front. They score! Second of the day for Tatum James and the Warriors are in business now. 3-0 with 8.27 to go. You're looking for something to tip the scales. A third goal like that, Tatum James. Ooh. Beauty. Of course, you get your goalie knocked out of the way. Player there. We're seeing on the replay she tried, but just gets in that five goal. Nearly a, a sensational save there by Lothian, the rookie defender, who tried desperately to cover for her goaltender there, who was caught out of position after making that initial stop. But James bearing down on it, and uh, that'll take us to our third period uh, media timeout. Warriors leading St. FX 3-0 here in the third. You're watching U Sports Women's Hockey on CBC. In the heart of Saskatoon, where the winters are long, hockey is not just a sport, it's a way of life. Behind every team, there's a community that supports them. At Connect Energy, we're proud to be a Saskatoon-based company that powers local businesses with natural gas options to help them thrive. We're excited to sponsor the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Join us in supporting local businesses and the future of hockey. Back underway here at Merlis Belcher Place in the third period, and the Waterloo Warriors have scored twice in 
fairly quick succession here to open up a 3-0 lead. Desperation time now for the St. FX X women who I'll admit I thought coming into this tournament, I even said it to you, Rihanna, I thought they were a bit of a dark horse in this tournament and uh, well, shows how much I, at least so far, they still have time to if we look good on that, but it's, they've got a lot of work to do. Still eight minutes, though, left. It's championship hockey. Anything could happen, Ryan. Well, of course, and the most biggest priority is making me look look smart, right? That's, <laughs> that's all, we, all we care about. Oh, no, we just want some good hockey. And so far, Waterloo has been able to execute Orth with a nice move, cutting in a shot wide on the short side. I think I have to clarify something, too, as I, I don't have it right here in front of me, but Sarah Best, a third year eligibility, but I do believe this is her first year with the Warriors. She did spend a season with Wilfrid Laurier, and then actually last year, if memory serves, she played junior women's hockey in Ontario, in the Ontario Junior Women's League out there, or the U22 league that they have out there, and then came back to U Sports this season. So third year eligibility, but first year Warrior. And it's Bestic who scored that second goal that really, you can see the Warriors just kind of exhale. Oh yeah, After big time, that, that nice insurance goal. And then of course, Tatum James coming in with that third goal again, just the heat, the heat behind them now. 7.04 to go, face off to the right of Michaela Schnarr, who has not had a lot to do here since the first period, just eight shots directed her way since the start of the second period. She has been Flawless thus far. 20 saves in all. In comes Burbage looking to break that goose egg. Burbage nearly followed her into the slot, but it's cleared away by Waterloo. Careful what you're saying about the goaltender there. We've got a little bit of superstition. Oh, I forgot I'm careful, working with careful. a goalie. I'm a, I'm a firm of non-believer in that, in the broadcaster jigs. So. <laughs> I, I, I was not sensitive to my partner's positional uh, history, history there, so. <laughs> we have icing against Waterloo. You notice I did, say, I did not say that word. No, but you're getting close, you're getting close. <laughs> Well, we'll say, we'll say this about Michaela Schnarr, is that this is just kind of following on her recent play uh, for the Warriors. Of course, coming back from that injury after they lost game one of the uh, OUA semifinal and basically allowed two goals in the three games since, uh, and now four uh, since coming back from injury. So she's obviously been right on top of her game despite missing some time there at the beginning of the conference playoffs. James on hat trick watch now as well with six minutes to play, just passing that one down to the corner and the X women trying to mount a charge here, Burbage. Dumps it into the corner. Mazur on her horse. Racing down there along with Aitchison as they come together. Lenarden for Waterloo. Plays it to the line, but held in there. Hobbed into the near corner. Moses pinching in to keep the play deep. Warriors content to eat some clock here in the corner. Now five and a half to go. Herford comes away with the puck and delivers a rink-wide pass to Lenarden. Now James will circle back at the St. of X line. Leave it for Cho. And a nice one-touch pass finds Hin, or Rin, excuse me. As that pass bounced in front of the bench and came up and hit a St. of X player, as that'll give us a stoppage in play and the faceoff will be back in X women territory. So we take a look at the offensive production by Waterloo here today. We got that nice first goal, of course, by Tatum James. Coming in, Bestick getting her first of the year. And then again, Tatum James with that nice open net. Tatum James, uh, number two point producer for Waterloo during the regular season. Nine goals, 17 assists. So she's certainly continuing to play with that, off that offensive flair here in this U Sports National Championship quarterfinal. Centering pass, there's a chance in front for Rin, and that's stopped by Girodier. And Girodier, actually a Saskatchewan-born player, so from Assiniboia, yeah. which is not too far away from Saskatoon, a few hours. Nice to have those Sask roots here. Yeah, I want to say about, I mean, I want to say about a three-ish hour drive south. 
depends on the roads. Yeah, depends that's on who's true. Driving. This time of year, maybe a little <laughs> longer, maybe. Depends if you take the straight route through Moose Jaw or if yeah. you go through. Anyway, that's enough Saskatchewan geography. That's my other nerdiness. Uh, in Southern Saskatchewan, Assiniboia. And this Cinefx roster, in fact, is, is very well represented across the country. They have players from seven different provinces on the team. With Nova Scotia and Ontario leading the way, no surprise there. Burbage with a clapper from inside the line. That's wall wide of the net as we're down just over four minutes to go now here in the third. Waterloo in the driver's seat with the three nothing lead. St. FX trying to find something here. Van de Sample. Burbage is shot up high. That's stopped by Schnarr. And no second opportunity here for St. FX. There's a collision in front of the X Women bench. We've got a penalty call and a, a second hit and an X Women player down on the ice in some serious discomfort. Down there is that Mazer, I believe, Makaya Mazer. The penalty wasn't being called on the initial plate. It's a penalty on Waterloo. There was a first hit on Rate. And that wasn't the penalty, but there was another collision. I didn't see it because I was watching the play follow, but so we get a look at it here on the replay. It's right against the boards. And Brooklyn Cole, the Waterloo captain, is headed off. Not a good play. Almost looks like she maybe hit the boards or that kind of dividing glass there, but she is still down. Well, while we're... Uh, watching Mazur get attended to here. Let's remind you the gold medal game here at the 2024 GFL U Source Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy. At Eight o'clock Eastern, that is six o'clock local time on Sunday. And just like today's game, you can see it right here on CBC and all of the various CBC Sports platforms where CBC Sports.ca, CBC Sports uh, app, the CBC Gem app, CBC Sports YouTube channel, lots of ways to watch this tournament and uh, we're gonna have uh, looks like Mazur is on the bench so that's a good good sign obviously for the X women and it is just a two minute penalty on the board for Cole so good to see her on the bench she didn't leave the bench area either so that's always an encouraging sign too when players hurt uh, during play Either way though, the Warriors have handed the X Women maybe just a little bit of an opening here. This power play, they need to, this is obviously a must score situation right now. Big time, you need to be getting a goal, you need to be getting it now. Less than four minutes to go and you're down three nothing, you need something. And the net is empty, no surprise, and Tatum James nets the hat trick goal just like that. You knew the X Women had to pull out all the stops there to get themselves to six on four with the power play and the three goal deficit. But that of course is the danger. And you can't keep the puck in the zone. James makes him pay a hat trick here in the opening game of the national championship. And I mean, it might be the opening game, but she's leading the tournament in scoring right now. <laughs> she is, clubhouse leader. Of course, maybe eventually we'll see just like that PWHL rule where when you are shorthanded, if you score, you get your player back. Maybe someday we'll see it filter into university hockey. You know, I think that league, not just for hockey, but in general, some of the innovative things that they are doing are going to start to be done in other leagues and other sports. And there's just so much fresh thinking in that league right now. It's great to see. In comes Burbage with a shot and another save by Schnarr. Hangs on, no rebound there, 3.23 to go, and uh, now the clock can't move fast enough for Waterloo. Probably one of the biggest things out of PWHL that I think would be fantastic here at University Hockey is those name bars on the bottom of the jersey for women, so you don't see the hair getting in the way. Yeah, great initiative that they did for it. I think it was just a one-off, but uh, still a cool idea that PWHL threw those names down below the number on the women's jerseys. Pearson back for it, and St. FX essentially looks like they're throwing up the white flag at this point as Giraudier in the net, so it doesn't look like Ben Berthium is gonna try to pull the goaltender again here to get the two skater advantage. There's still a minute left in this power play. Now if they score, <laughs> things might change, so under three to go. Burbage across, but Pearson flashed on that shot. 
Behind the net, the centering pass. Here's a chance in front, they score. Don't go anywhere just yet. The excellent are on the board as Karen Moses gets the goal. And it is four to one with 2.40 to play. Beautiful, beautiful, right from the slot. She finds that bottom right corner, nets it in, and I mean, you're getting on the board. It's something. With two minutes and 40 seconds left, it ain't over just yet. Excellent, finally find the back of the net and dent the armor of Michaela Schnarr. And uh, we still got a little time left here. We'll see if the X-Women can pull off the miracle comeback. Switzer speeding into the zone, but her pass across is cut off by Orth. The net is empty again, racing back, but reaching and can't make the save. Girodier, another empty net goal for Waterloo. And it's Carly Orth getting in on the scoring party here. 5-1 with 2.15 to go. Tough go, tough go on that play for St. Effects. Of course, they wanted to get their goal on the bench, get that extra attacker, but turned around and kind of bit them a little bit there. You understand why? They're, they're back within three. Yep. There's still two and a half minutes left. But tough, yeah, tough timing on that turnover as Zero D was quite off the ice and just couldn't get back there in time. Couldn't pull off the Marc-Andre Fleury uh, save there. So looking like St. FX will be dropping out of the consolation bracket. Uh, those two, there are two consolation semifinals will be played on Saturday. We've got a penalty coming up here, however, first, and it's going against St. FX, I do believe. We're gonna have matching penalties. It's a body checking call, the signal being made, and yes, it is the X-Women's Vivian Hinch who's headed to the box, her second minor of the game. Of course, we like seeing that physical style of play, but it's nice that the referees are keeping it respectful. Is that the word I wanna use here? They're not letting too, too much go. They're managing the game well, I would say, yeah, yeah. Warriors with a late power play here, a chance to add maybe one more. Waterloo will be moving on. There's a tip sh a shot, scores! Madison Pritchard set up the first goal today and now gets one of her own, six to one, as the Warriors pour it on here late. Six goals total here in the third period. It is some exciting hockey to say the least right now. Power play goal as well for Waterloo, and that may serve them well moving ahead to the semifinals to get some production there on the power play. Big time. They're going to be ready to go come into semifinals on Saturday. So Waterloo, of course, will advance to meet the winner of tonight's quarterfinal between Concordia and Saskatchewan. So they will be watching that game with great interest this evening, as will we all. Minute 20 left now here. It's all over about the shouting. The Warriors have exploded for five in this third period. A couple of into an empty net, uh, mind you, but still a big offensive outburst here to really salt this one away. St. FX, you know, just feels like they never really got to the game that they wanted to play here today. Yeah, they were gripping their sticks just a little bit too tightly today. You can see the nerves as they were coming into the different stretches of the games, just those passes a couple steps ahead of them or bumbling the puck through the neutral zone, just not quite the kind of hockey that they're used to playing. You, you know, you talk about how well all the newcomers have meshed into this lineup for St. FX and certainly not taking anything away from them in that regard, but maybe this is where all that sort of fresh newness kind of reveals itself a little bit on the national stage, right? You, you've got 12 players who have never had this experience before. Um, I think they'll be better served for it. They'll, they will likely not be surprised to see them back in this uh, tournament competing for a medal next year, uh, but obviously a bitter disappointment here. This is not how they envisioned their start to the national championship. Unfortunately, but great experience, especially with those 12 new skaters getting the same time up on the national stage. And they still have some consolation. Final buzzer sounds here. Merlis Belcher plays as the women in gold still have a shot. 
at gold. The Waterloo Warriors exploding here in the third as they turn a 1-0 lead into a 6-1 victory over the St. FX X-Women, and they move on to the semifinals. And again, that will be on Saturday. They'll play the winner of the Concordia and Saskatchewan game coming up later tonight. That's a seven o'clock local time start, 9 p.m. Eastern from here in Saskatoon. And uh, that should be a lot of fun here, but very quickly just to wrap things up here from Merlis Belcher Place. Just final thoughts from you, uh, Rihanna, on this game that we watched here this afternoon. It was a tight, evenly matched game for that first 40, 50 minutes almost. And then there was just that surge from Waterloo where they were able to net so many goals. Of course, nice to get St. FX up on the board, but unfortunately one goal isn't going to do it when you allow six on your goaltender. Girardier, of course, played fantastically. Hard to do anything when your team only puts up one goal, but Schnur, fantastic game as well by her. Yeah, Michaela Schnarr was going to be our player of the game. Uh, that is until the Warriors got one by her, but also I think because Tatum James got the third goal. That was more yeah. of the factor there uh, as Tatum James is our player of the game. A hat trick. Hey, hat tricks are rare enough uh, to get one at the national championship. That's a pretty big deal. And Tatum James is our player of the game. Well deserved. Well deserved. The teams will line up here at the respective blue lines and we'll have the player of the game presentation I do believe here on the ice and I think they present so that was our player of the game Tatum James but there are also uh, player of the game from each team is uh, identified here and they get a special memento a, a special souvenir stick which uh, looks pretty sharp it looks like it's got some husky colors on it and so this is oh, I always feel bad for the team, the losing team in these post-game yes. situations. They, they probably just would like to get off the ice, start thinking about regrouping for the consolations, right? But it's also good to see a player recognized here. Oh, no surprise, Tatum James uh, in-house as well is the player of the game. Third year forward from Stratford, Ontario. I hear they do some good shoots here that way. Xavier, number and the captain Maggie. of the X-Women, Maggie Burbage. Yeah. Well deserved for her, she had a hard time. Yeah, she was doing everything she could to try to generate offense, but again, credit that Warriors defense, not just their goalie, but Michaela Schnarr, but their defense really kept the X-Women outside for most of this game. It definitely did photo opportunity here for the two players of the game and that will pretty much do it for us uh, don't forget of course our next quarterfinal comes up tonight 9 p.m. Eastern that is a 7 o'clock local time start as the number one seed Concordia Stingers take on the host University of Saskatchewan Huskies we hope you can join us for that one thank you so much for watching this one on behalf of Rihanna Kaminsky and our entire crew here at Merlis Belcher Place I'm Ryan Flaherty Thanks for watching. This has been quarterfinal number one here at the GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy on CBC. Championnat du sport à Radio-Canada, une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettler.
Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Yeah, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des packs des championnats U Sport. By Connect Energy, proud presenting partner of this U Sports Championship. Par Connect Energy, fier partenaire de ce championnat U Sport. And by GFL, proud title partner of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Par GFL, fier partenaire en titre du championnat de hockey féminin U Sport 2024.